Hi, I'm Don McKinney. I'm with Coatings by Sandberg and I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about how to do a compatibility stringer pull test. Uh, we occasionally get requests to uh, check a piece of glass to see if it's compatible with itself or with another glass. And this is the simplest test that I know of. Uh, it'll give you real quick results. Over here I've pre-fired two piles of glass. This is a 90 on 90. The base glass is black, the top glass is clear. It'll be easier to identify it after the pull as to which is which. The piece below it is 90 with a 96 top. So when I pull that, it should pull in a curve because the glass is not compatible. So I've cut out some small pieces and you just want to use small pieces. These stringer pulls are very small. So these are half inch by quarter inch. And up here we've got my control piece, which is my 90 black. These are all the same thickness. This is a piece of clear with dichroic on it. Now to use that, I'm going to need to sand the dichroic off so it ends up looking like that. If I don't sand the dichroic off, when I go to do my pull, it's going to pull real lumpy. It won't pull nice and even. My next piece is a 90 clear. And then I'm going to go into the 96. It's not going to be compatible with my 90s. So when I pull these three, they should pull straight because it's all 90. Once I add a 96 to the 90, it'll pull curved. And when there's a big difference in compatibility, say you were pulling a borosilicate, a 32 COE, on a 90, the curve would be very, very dramatic. This bottom piece is a 96, again with dichroic on it, and I would use sandpaper to sand that dichroic off. If the piece you want to test has dichroic coating on it, you'll need to remove the dichroic. Uh, you can sand it off or etch it off, whatever works. Here I'm going to use some sandpaper and sand the coating off. The coating would otherwise interfere with the test. Now there's different ways that you can make these poles. I showed you that over here I tack fuse these pieces together because sometimes in the flame the glass is real shocky and it wants to blow up on you so the tack fuse pieces they should be very stable once I put handles on them to pull them. Come over here if you've got two glass rods you can take them in the flame Heat them both, overlay them together in the flame about a quarter of an inch, and then heat it into a ball and pull it. That'll make your two handles. For these pieces that I've uh, already pre-fired to attack, you can take glass handles and attach one to each end and do your pull. You could grab it with tweezers and do a pull, hemostat, anything that you can do a nice even pull with. Here's two pieces that are stripped longer and you can do the same with, that you're doing with a glass rod. You can just heat them in the torch and overlay them and heat them and then you'll be able to pull those out. So here will be the results of your stringer pull test. We've got a straight stringer. The question was, was this 104 or was this 90? So I took two pieces of 104 and put them together and pulled it and you can see that the stringer is pretty straight. And on my second pull, I married up a piece of 90 with a 104 and you can see that there's a pretty dramatic curve. And that tells me immediately that the glass truly was 104, it was not 90. So I'm going to start out with two glass rods here that I know are not compatible. Start to heat them slowly in the flame. And I'm going to heat this transparent one a little bit hotter on the tip so that I can stick it onto the rod about a quarter of an inch back and then lay it down. Now these two pieces are joined together. 
And I want to keep their position separate. I don't want to twist this. I want to keep it even so that when I pull it out, one color will be on the top and one will be on the bottom. Heat the ball into a mass, get it good and hot. <clears throat> Start to let it pull going up. Switch ends and go up. Going to a nice, steady, even pull. And I'm going to stop and let it harden up a little bit. I'm going to flame cut off one end. And you can see as soon as that cut off, that started to curve. So this time I'm going to take two rods that I know are both the same COE and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to let this transparent one heat up a little bit more on the tip so I can stick it right on that rod, lay it down <clears throat> and meld these together. Again not twisting, just want to heat them into a molten mass. Keeping one on the top and one on the bottom. Get it good and hot. Go up and down. Let the heat transfer. Nice and slow. Nice even pull on it and stop. So I'm pulling that out roughly two feet. Let it firm up, take it into the flame, and flame caught off one end. And you can see how much straighter that piece stayed. Flame cut it at this end. And we'll take those to the board and I'll show you the difference. Okay. So this piece that pulled straight, those are both pieces of 96 rod. And now you can definitely see that this is curved. One piece was 90 and one piece was 96. That's the pull stringer test. So on these pre-fired pieces, I'm going to hold it with the tweezers. And I'm going to get a glass handle. I'm going to really warm this up slowly. Because even though it's already been pre-fired, the glass can still be pretty shocky. It's a pretty cool day here in the building, so I want to warm this slowly. I'll start to heat up my handle. It doesn't matter what you use for a handle. You can use Boro, you can use 90, 96, whatever you've got handy. I'm going to stick this on the end. With my second handle, keep the piece warm, work out in the flame where it's just keeping the glass warm. I don't want it to start melting yet. I want to get my other handle heated up here. Superheat my handle and stick it on. Let it cool just a little bit, now I can start heating the mass. Again, I want to not twist this. I want to keep it bunched up. So I'll make a nice even pull with one color on the top and one on the bottom. Got a good heated mass. Pull it slowly up and down. Let the heat transfer. A nice straight pull on it. This one's a lot thinner, but it doesn't matter. You can see that curve in it immediately as soon as you cut the one end loose. That was our uh, 9096 piece. Okay, so on this, I'm going to take two individual pieces. So if you don't want to pre fire, you don't have to. I'm going to start to heat up my punny. 
And I'm going to add a piece at a time to the end of the punny. But again, I want to heat those slowly so that they don't explode in the flame. Warm it up a little bit. Stick this first one on here. Just keep it warm. I'm going to come back and get my other piece. And do the same thing. So I'm going to heat this piece up. And I'm going to stick it on next to the other piece. Warm them a little bit. Squeeze them together. And then I can get ready to attach my other punny handle. Okay. So I'm going to heat my masses again. I'm not twisting. Just want to make a ball of molten glass that I can pull out, keeping one color on the top, one on the bottom. Kind of pushing them together to make it a little bit more of a ball. I'm going to slowly pull it out, up and down. Okay, and then I'm just going to hold it still. So I can cut one end off. No surprise to me, it stayed nice and straight because this was 90 on 90, whereas the piece we just did before it was 90 and 96. Cut the other end off, and I'll show you the results on the board. So here's the pull we just did. This bottom piece is the 90 on 90, nice and straight, and the piece above it is the 90 and 96, and you can see that curve. There's no denying it, so. There too is uh, another one of your compatibility tests doing a string or pull. I've never had this knot work. Go ahead and try it. <laughs>